16 years ago, two babies were accidentally swapped at birth. Now, Nagi Yumino is about to meet his biological parents, marking the end of a long journey in search of his true identity. During a fateful encounter, Nagi finds himself rescuing a girl named Erika Amato from a bridge just as she contemplates jumping. Erika reveals that she was filming a video to provoke her wealthy parents and escape an arranged marriage, seeking a path of her own choosing. In an unexpected twist, Erika resorts to blackmailing Nagi, coercing him into posing as her boyfriend. However, their pretense quickly attracts the ire of Erika's fans, who attempt to attack Nagi. To everyone's surprise, Nagi skillfully fights them off, revealing a surprising truth, his adoptive parents were once notorious troublemakers. Amidst the chaos, Erika has a change of heart, abandoning her blackmail scheme and instead confronts her own fiancé with a swift punch before making her exit. Filled with urgency, Nagi hurries to meet both his adoptive and biological parents. Reluctant to part with the children they have raised, a surprising proposition emerges. They suggest that Nagi and Erika, who coincidentally enters the room, should get married. To everyone's astonishment, it is revealed that Erika is the baby who was switched with Nagi at birth. In a twist of fate, they are now officially engaged. She vehemently displays her disapproval by landing yet another punch on Nagi, leaving no room for doubt about her objections. While at school, Nagi catches sight of Hiro Sagawa, his academic rival and secret crush. Nagi has made a personal vow to confess his feelings to her, but with one condition, he will only do so after surpassing her exam scores. In a previous conversation, Hiro mentioned her preference for dating someone who is intellectually superior to her. Additionally, Nagi's sister, Sachai, comes to the realization that this revelation implies that they are not biologically related as siblings. Nagi is surprised when Erika pays a visit to his modest house. Coming from a wealthy background, Erika finds it hard to fathom that Nagi's entire family resides in such a small dwelling. She extends an invitation to Nagi, urging him to visit her family's grand and luxurious mansion. During their conversation, Erika discloses that her family possesses six similar mansions across different parts of Japan and various countries. The stark contrast in their lifestyles prompts Nagi to question the feasibility of a successful marriage between them. Ultimately, he reaches the difficult decision to reject their engagement. In a surprising turn of events, Erika takes the initiative and rejects Nagi first, insisting on meeting his parents to deliver the news personally. She expresses her determination to inform them herself about their broken engagement. At the dinner, Nagi's parents greet Erika with excitement, but Nagi begins to panic as he realizes the trouble he's in. In contrast, Erika becomes visibly upset. Nagi's parents express their desire for Erika to meet Sachai, Nagi's biological sister. However, Erika abruptly leaves, tearfully explaining to Nagi that his parents are incredibly kind-hearted individuals, and she cannot bear to disappoint them by ending the engagement. After a heartfelt conversation, Nagi manages to reassure Erika and convinces her to return to the diner. Gradually, everyone gathers for a family dinner, including Erika. In a touching gesture of acceptance and fondness, Sachi discreetly adds Erika's chopsticks to their family utensil jug, symbolizing her embrace of Erika as part of their family. During their walk back to Erika's home, Nagi encounters her father, who coincidentally is also Nagi's biological father. Filled with assurance, he expresses confidence in Nagi and Erika's ability to thrive as a married couple, despite their unconventional circumstances. To demonstrate his conviction, he surprises them by purchasing a house and insists that they reside there together for a period of two weeks. Determined to outshine Hiro in their upcoming exam, Nagi commits himself to two weeks of dedicated study. However, amidst his focused efforts, Nagi is startled by Erika's sudden scream, compelling him to rush towards the bathroom. Upon arriving, Nagi discovers Erika in a state of fear, startled by the presence of a harmless lizard. In response, Nagi finds himself obliged to borrow Erika's study materials, agreeing to take pictures for her social media as a favor. However, their impromptu photo session inadvertently captures moments that create the appearance of them being a couple. During their time spent together, Nagi opens up about his unwavering dedication to studying, driven by his desire to support his parents in their retirement. In contrast, Erika shares her affinity for social media, explaining her hope that it may lead her to someone she has been searching for. To Naga's pleasant surprise, he discovers that he has actually surpassed Hiro's performance in the exam. Hiro requests a private conversation with Nagi, leaving him anticipating her confession now that he has proven his intelligence. However, instead of confessing, Hiro reveals that she missed the exam due to a family funeral. Undeterred, she challenges Nagi to a rematch, determined to surpass him in the next exam. Nagi finds himself growing even more admiring of Hiro's competitive spirit. 
Unfortunately, Nagi falls ill with a cold and pretends to study while Erika takes care of him. During this time, Erika admits that his dedication to his studies has left a lasting impression on her. Nagi finds himself surprised by Erika's appreciation for his dedication to studying, as most people often criticize him for studying too much. Meanwhile, Hiro intensifies her efforts, driven by a strong determination to surpass Nagi in their academic rivalry. Furious about Nagi's motivation to defeat her in the exam, Hiro questions him. Nagi explains that he believed Hiro would only consider dating someone who is intellectually superior to herself. However, Hiro reminds Nagi that winning the first exam was just a small victory, as she has triumphed over him in 10 exams prior. She further reveals that she is already engaged to someone else. As Nagi's time of living with Erika draws to a close, they both decide to have an honest conversation with their parents, expressing their dissatisfaction with the entire experience. To Nagi's dismay, he learns that his family had to relocate to a hotel due to a pipe burst at their home, leaving him with no option but to continue living with Erika. Meanwhile, Sachai, Nagi's sister, becomes upset upon realizing that he won't be returning home. Determined to address the situation, Sachai decides to visit Nagi and Erika. Erika, aware that Sachai is technically her biological sister, panics at the prospect. The initial encounter between the two sisters is filled with awkwardness, prompting Nagi to suggest that they cook dinner together as a way to break the ice. Erika, lacking cooking experience, finds herself unfamiliar with the luxurious kitchen gadgets in her home. On the other hand, Sachi is unaccustomed to such extravagances. Consequently, Nagi ends up taking charge of most of the cooking during dinner. As they dine, Nagi observes and points out the similarities in behavior between Erika and Sachi. Moved by Sachai's limited wardrobe, Erika kindly offers her some of her dresses upon learning that Sachai only possesses her school uniform and Nagi's old clothes. Before departing, Erika assures Sachai that both she and Nagi have no intention of proceeding with the marriage. As a memento of their meeting, Sachi captures a picture with Erika. Nagi is surprised when Hiro approaches him, expressing a desire to study together. He hopes that this indicates Hiro's preference for him over her fiancé. During their study session, they discover their mutual interest in collecting commemorative Shinto shrine stamps, igniting a friendly competition to see who can amass the highest number of stamps. Hiro suggests the idea of studying together every morning, prompting Nagi to contemplate revealing their engagement to her. Surprisingly, Erika transfers into Nagi's class, revealing that she accidentally uploaded one of their staged couple pictures online, which led to her all-girls school demanding a disciplinary meeting. However, Erika decides to skip the meeting to take care of Nagi while he recovers from his cold. As a consequence, her father arranges for her transfer to Nagi's school. Erika insists that Nagi keeps their engagement a secret from their classmates. In the role of the class representative, Hiro takes on the task of showing Erika around the school. Nagi finds himself concerned about the potential consequences if his fiancé and his crush develop a friendship. Over time, Nagi comes to the realization that Erika is in need of a true and genuine friend, unlike the superficial girls from her previous school. Motivated by this understanding, Nagi takes it upon himself to assist and support Erika, which she deeply appreciates. Meanwhile, Hiro starts to grow suspicious of Nagi's extensive knowledge about Erika. Nagi decides to ignite a new wave of competitiveness between himself and Hiro by claiming to be a fan of Erika. To his surprise, Hiro also reveals herself to be a big fan of Erika. Hiro extends an invitation to Erika, inviting her to join their study sessions, which intensifies Nagi's unease about the situation. Nagi confesses to Erika that he had previously expressed his feelings to Hiro, and Erika agrees to assist him. During their first study session, going all out, Erika even dresses up as Cupid to create a memorable study session. Despite Erika's efforts to bring Nagi and Hiro closer, her attempts fail. Nagi and Erika's arguments and interactions only serve to heighten Hiro's suspicion. Hiro requests to visit Erika's home for their study session. Nagi instructs Erika to take Hiro to her original mansion, but unforeseen renovations redirect them to Nagi's house instead. In order to avoid being discovered, Nagi hastily conceals any evidence of them living together and retreats to his room. Unfortunately, the fans that Nagi had previously fought off when he first met Erika discover their house and forcefully enter the garden. Nagi finds himself having to confront them once again. Eventually, Hiro decides to leave the situation. The following day, Hiro extends an invitation to Nagi and Erika to study at her home. Hiro discloses that her family is responsible for managing the local shrine, providing Nagi with an opportunity to collect shrine stamps. During their visit, they also meet Hiro's mother, who expresses displeasure at Nagi's presence in Hiro's absence. She confides in Nagi, clarifying that when she mentioned being engaged, she was referring to her future inheritance of the shrine. Hiro's mother intentionally framed her engagement in a way to dissuade Nagi from pursuing a relationship with her. She had suspicions that Nagi might abandon his own aspirations to manage the shrine together with her, 
and she didn't want to burden him with such a significant decision. Privately, Nagi resolves to delve deeper into Hiro's family background and contemplates the possibility of taking on the responsibility of running the shrine himself. As a field trip to Kamakura approaches, Erika initially declines to participate. However, she skillfully manipulates Nagi into forming a group with Hiro. Hiro proposes that their group project should revolve around a contest to collect the most shrine stamps. During their discussion, Hiro discloses that her parents are exerting pressure on her to inherit the shrine, despite her own desires. She expresses her hope that Nagi can assist in altering her predetermined fate. Erika reveals that one of her classmates and fans named Chin has joined Nagi's group, assuming that Erika would also be present. In order to prevent Chin from bothering Nagi and Hiro, Erika reluctantly agrees to go on the trip. During the trip, it becomes evident that Shin is an annoying superfan, but he proves helpful to Erika by taking exceptional photos. Nagi becomes so engrossed in observing them that he neglects spending time with Hiro, who decides to go stamp collecting on her own. Meanwhile, Nagi offers to assist Erika in taking another photo, but their interaction leads to an argument. In an unexpected twist, their squabble unintentionally results in capturing another flawless couple photo, which surprisingly becomes Erika's favorite. Nagi's curiosity about the person Erika has been searching for grows, but she cautions him that discovering the individual's identity could potentially alter his future. The next day, when Erika is out running errands, Sachi pays a visit to Nagi. Observing Nagi's behavior, Sachi accuses him of having a disagreement with Erika. Eventually, Nagi confides in Sachi about his dilemma and expresses his intention to inquire about the person Erika has been searching for. Sachi, citing difficulties in studying at the rented room she shares with their parents, decides to move in with Nagi and Erika. While Nagi attempts to be stern with Sachi, Erika warmly welcomes her and offers no support to Nagi's strict approach. During a private conversation, Erika probes Sachai about her true intentions, and Sachai confesses her fear of Erika and Nagi getting married, which would mean losing Nagi forever. Upon hearing this, Nagi experiences a change of heart and decides to let Sachai stay, even though he immediately regrets his decision as Sachai takes over his room. Nagi finds himself tasked with shopping for Sachai's essentials and notices her popularity among people. Erika suggests taking new family photos that include Sachai and takes the initiative to move Sachai into her own bedroom. In the process, they discover that Sachai talks in her sleep. At last, Nagi musters the courage to have a heartfelt conversation with Erika. He admits that he is not yet prepared for his future to change but expresses his genuine interest in learning about the person she has been searching for when the time is right. Erika finds Naga's worries amusing but promises to share the information when he feels ready. Meanwhile, Hiro invites Nagi on a date to an amusement park. However, Naga's excitement turns into disappointment when he realizes that Hiro only invited him for the two-person discount at the amusement park. Hiro sincerely apologizes for leaving him alone during their trip to Kamakura, explaining that she had gotten lost. While they navigate through a mirror maze, Nagi mistakenly believes he kisses Hiro, but it turns out he had actually kissed a mirror, much to Hiro's amusement. While Nagi is on his date with Hiro, Sachai finds herself in a sour mood and attributes it to Nagi being out on a date, despite her own engagement to Erika. In an attempt to cheer Sachai up, Erika accompanies her to a baseball center and later to a public bath. During their time together, Erika expresses her gratitude for having Sachi as her sister, but Sachi remains upset about the changes happening around them. Nagi, upon returning from his date, finds himself subject to teasing and torment from Sachai. Meanwhile, Erika opts to invite her mother for a late-night visit to the bathhouse. Unexpectedly, Nagi and Sachai's father, Yohei, emerges and decides to take them all fishing, despite Nagi's aversion to it due to his seasickness. Yohei expresses his desire to spend quality time with all of his children. Nagi recalls a previous agreement with Yohei that he would stop taking him fishing if Nagi managed to catch a bigger fish. Motivated by this memory, Nagi becomes resolute and focused on fishing, but to his disappointment, he ends up catching the smallest fish instead. As the fishing trip comes to an end, Nagi comes to the realization that Yohei would take him fishing when he was feeling stressed because it served as a distraction from his own troubles. Nagi expresses his heartfelt appreciation to Yohei for providing him with such support. Meanwhile, Erika finds herself contemplating the kind of person she would have become if she had been raised by her biological family. On Mother's Day, Erika spends the day with her mother, Rituko. Meanwhile, Sachi approaches Nagi for assistance in finding a gift for their mother. Together, they decide on an apron for her to wear at the restaurant. During their interaction, Nagi pats Sachi's head, which annoys her as she dislikes being treated like a little sister. They manage to deliver the apron without being noticed. Erika opens up to Rituko and admits that sometimes she wonders if Nagi would be better off marrying Sachai. 
The following day, Erika receives a text from her father, Soakiro. In response, she takes Nagi shopping and confesses that she is intentionally avoiding her father, fearing that he might want to take her back home. Meanwhile, Soakiro arrives but only finds Sachai, and he takes her out for dinner. To obtain information about Erika and Nagi, Erika decides to confront her father, but Nagi opts to assist her in evading him. Sachi acknowledges that despite Erika and Nagi frequently arguing, their bond has grown stronger as a result. So Akiro proposes a deal to Sachai, offering her sweets in exchange for regular updates on Erika and Nagi. Sachai agrees to the arrangement. Meanwhile, So Akiro returns to his office and reflects on the parenting behavior of Cuckoo Birds. He unveils a photograph featuring himself, Rituko, Erika, and a boy who bears a striking resemblance to Nagi. Sachi resumes working at their parents' dinner but remains firm in her decision not to return home. A sudden lightning strike results in a power outage, leaving Nagi and Erika in darkness. Seizing the opportunity, Erika asks Nagi about his feelings regarding their cohabitation, expressing her own delight in living with Nagi and Sachi since their initial meeting. In the darkness, Nagi accidentally bumps into Sachai and kisses her. However, as the lights suddenly come back on, Sachi feels embarrassed by the situation. But her embarrassment turns to anger when Nagi suggests forgetting about the kiss, attributing it to his mistake in identifying her as Erika. The following day, Sachi begins treating Nagi coldly, especially when her friends at school bring up a TV show depicting romantic relationships between siblings. This triggers a wave of doubt within Sachi, making her question her own feelings towards Nagi. The growing tension between them becomes palpable. Erika confronts Nagi about his mistake in a direct and frank manner, emphasizing that while he may see Sachi as his little sister, she is not his blood relative and is approaching adulthood. Nagi feels uncertain about how to apologize, but with Hiro's support and encouragement, he musters the courage to apologize to Sachi. He promises to see her as a woman and not just as a child. Sachi forgives him, and her demeanor starts to become happier and more at ease. Erika invites Nagi to go shopping with her, but he declines, mentioning other commitments. Instead, he asks Hiro to study together as a way to make up for his previous embarrassment during their amusement park outing. Since they are at the public library, they resort to communicating through written notes, which surprisingly creates an unexpected sense of intimacy between them. Hiro extends an invitation to Nagi to visit a kickboxing gym, which leaves Erika feeling upset when she witnesses them engaging in sparring activities. On the next day, Erika strongly insists on going on a date with Nagi. After coaxing him into a jog, she confesses that she assumed he enjoyed exercising due to his kickboxing activities. In an unexpected twist, Nagi takes the opportunity to explain the concept of jealousy to Erika, implying that her feelings of jealousy may indicate a deeper liking for him. Erika's outburst, expressing that she doesn't currently have feelings for Nagi, leaves him puzzled and prompts him to reevaluate his own emotions towards Erika. In search of guidance, Nagi visits his parents' restaurant and unexpectedly discovers a collection of embarrassing love letters written by his father, Yohei, to his mother, Naomi, during their high school days. Yohei explains that love can drive people to do embarrassing things, but if it's genuine love, it's worth it. Nagi starts questioning his own capacity to experience such deep love. However, Yohei encourages Nagi to listen to his heart and explore his true feelings. As Nagi reflects on his emotions, he becomes even more perplexed as he discovers that he has developed deep feelings for not only Erika but also Hiro and Sachai. During the exams, Nagi finds himself unable to focus due to his swirling emotions, resulting in a sharp decline from his initial first place ranking to a disappointing 13th. Hiro appears visibly upset by this, which further exacerbates Nagi's feelings of disappointment. It takes a reminder from Sachi for Erika to grasp the gravity of the situation, as Nagi has never performed below second place before, let alone 13th. Nagi attributes his decline in rankings to his overconfidence and the fact that he neglected his studies while enjoying his time with Erika. However, Erika successfully convinces Nagi to regain his self-assurance through their spirited and argumentative banter, ultimately boosting his morale. The next day, Hiro arrives late to their usual morning study session. Upon witnessing Nagi and Erika engaged in their typical argument, Hiro decides to leave, distancing herself even more from Nagi. This leaves Nagi feeling downcast until he unexpectedly receives a summons from Hiro, requesting a meeting with him. Erika jumps to the assumption that Hiro has lost interest in Nagi because of his disappointing exam results and might reject him for good. However, Hiro is actually more concerned about the fact that Erika, not herself, was able to uplift Nagi's spirits. This realization leads Nagi to understand that he still loves Hiro and that she still cares for him. With this newfound clarity, Nagi regains his motivation and commits to studying diligently. On the other hand, Erika seeks Nagi's assistance to improve her own dismal grades. She confesses that if she fails her upcoming exams, her parents would insist on taking her back home with them. 
Despite struggling for over three hours, Erika feels a sense of resignation towards the possibility of moving out. Later, Nagi comes to the realization that Erika has been studying alone throughout the entire night. Sachi firmly believes that Nagi should dedicate himself to teaching Erika properly instead of half-heartedly focusing on his own studies. Recognizing his own negligence, Nagi bursts into Erika's room and makes a declaration that he will teach her the fundamental technique of memorizing typical exam questions to help her pass. After a weekend filled with intense studying, Erika successfully achieves a passing grade. So Aikiro, pleased with the outcome of his plan to manipulate Erika, expresses his satisfaction. Meanwhile, Sachi extends an invitation to Erika to attend a festival near their parents' dinner. At the festival, Nagi and Sachi are busy assisting their parents in running their yakisoba stall. Sachi feels a strong sense of embarrassment when a customer mistakenly assumes her to be Nagi's girlfriend. Meanwhile, Hiro arrives and invites Nagi to explore the other attractions of the festival together once he completes his work. Sachi becomes irritated that Nagi won't be accompanying her and Erika for the rest of the time. Later on, Hiro comes across Erika and Sachi together, and she becomes perplexed upon realizing that Sachi is both Erika and Nagi's sister. In another part of the festival, Nagi and Erika find themselves in a secluded area. Erika, being a popular figure, garners attention from her fans, prompting Nagi to purchase a mask to conceal his identity. During their time at the festival, Nagi unintentionally encounters Sachi and her friends, who playfully tease her about having a brother complex. Meanwhile, Erika finds herself surrounded by fans who had previously attempted to intrude into their house. Among the fans surrounding them, there is one who has specifically trained his muscles for a rematch with Nagi. In order to prevent any commotion, Nagi and Erika hastily escape from the scene. As they make their way away, they reflect on their recent experiences. Erika expresses that this summer has become her most cherished one, surpassing even the one she spent on luxurious vacations abroad with her parents. They enjoy watching the fireworks together, yet both Sachai and Hiro feel a sense of disappointment as they had hoped to witness the spectacle with Nagi. Hiro catches up to Nagi and Erika, seizing the moment to inquire about their relationship. Nagi and Erika, acknowledging Sachai as their sister, express their guilt and decide to disclose the truth about the switch at birth and their current engagement. Hiro accepts their explanation, and Erika harbors hope that their newfound understanding will pave the way for a stronger friendship. While Erika stays at the festival to find a gift for Sachai, Nagi accompanies Hiro on her way home. During their walk, Hiro extracts a promise from Nagi to never withhold another secret, and Nagi willingly agrees. However, their conversation doesn't go unnoticed as Sachai witnesses the interaction. Upon his return home, Nagi feels an overwhelming sense of happiness. As Sachai approaches Erika to inquire about Hiro, they spend the entire day observing Hiro, but find nothing suspicious about her. Meanwhile, Sachi declares her intention to attend the same high school as Nagi and dedicates herself to studying diligently. Nagi opens up to Erika about his concerns regarding Sachi's peculiar behavior, expressing worry that their bond as siblings is weakening. While Sachai diligently continues her studies, Sachai accompanies Hiro as her guide to the open day event at the school, where she becomes curious about Nagi. She asks Hiro for his opinion, and Hiro mentions Sachai's engagement but confesses his fascination with Nagi. Intrigued, Nagi secretly listens in on their conversation and discovers that Sachai and Hiro have unexpectedly become friends. Meanwhile, back at home, Sachai diligently continues her studies, but Nagi harbors concerns about the high annual fees associated with their chosen private academy, and their parents have already faced financial difficulties to afford Nagi's education. Selling their restaurant is being considered as a way to cover the costs if Sachi is accepted into the school. However, Sachi strongly refuses to allow them to proceed with selling the restaurant, sparking a fierce conflict of determination between her and their mother, Nami. In the midst of the intense standoff, Nagi and their father, Yo, feel a sense of fear and helplessness, unable to intervene or calm the situation. Fortunately, Erika takes the initiative to bring calmness to the situation as they all return home. In a significant moment, Sachai addresses Erika as her sister for the first time, which leaves Nagi feeling a bit disappointed that she didn't refer to him as her brother. Meanwhile, Nagi, Erika, and Hiro make arrangements to study together at Erika's vacation home in Karuzawa. Unexpectedly, Shin insists on joining the group, and Erika, wanting to keep a certain photo hidden, discreetly conceals it on a display table. Meanwhile, Erika and Shin venture off to do some food shopping together, leaving Nagi alone in the company of Hiro. Hiro proposes a secret getaway to a nearby lake, where she opens up about the challenges she faces when it comes to maintaining focus during study. Erika rejoins Hiro in the bath, and Shin reveals that he thanked Erika for inviting him to study with them, not confessing his feelings. Nagi experiences a mix of relief and confusion as he wonders why he felt relieved despite the absence of a confession. 
Later, Erica confesses to Hiro that she forgot to pack essential items for their trip, like underwear and pajamas. Despite their attempt to study, Shin stumbles upon a shrine in the forest, which he suggests would be perfect for a test of courage. Shin proposes that he goes with Erika to the shrine, while Nagi accompanies Hiro. Surprisingly, Erika changes her mind and decides to accompany Nagi, mentioning that she has something important to talk about. Intrigued by Hiro's intense focus on achieving top scores, Shin inquires about her obsession. Hiro evades a direct answer and instead offers to assist Shin in expressing his feelings to Erika, all while keeping her true intentions concealed. Sachi becomes unwell and requires hospitalization. In a moment of vulnerability, Erika reveals to Nagi that she has run out of underwear and is currently not wearing any beneath her dress. She requests Nagi's company to accompany her to a nearby convenience store to purchase new underwear. During dinner, Hiro observes a noticeable change in Nagi's demeanor as he seems happier than before. Nagi himself acknowledges this newfound joy. Just as they consider the idea of going stargazing together, Naga's mother, Naomi, sends him a text message regarding Sachi's condition. After some time, Erika becomes aware of Naga's absence, discovering that he had left without informing anyone and returned home by train. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Sachi reprimands Nagi for leaving his friends behind, but she is relieved that he eventually returned. When Erika arrives home, Nagi is taken aback when she unexpectedly supports his decision, leading him to acknowledge his lack of knowledge about Erika's personal life due to their disparate backgrounds. At the same time, Hiro ponders over a picture she had glimpsed earlier, which Erika had attempted to conceal. Consequently, Ikiro embarks on a journey to Karazawa and successfully recovers the picture, unveiling its revealing content. It becomes evident that so Ikiro deliberately left the picture there, hoping Nagi would stumble upon it. Nagi bravely confronts Erika about the person she has been desperately seeking, recognizing that it must be someone she deeply cares for. Putting aside any fear of the outcome, he musters the courage to ask her about the identity of that person. Erika shares the picture with Nagi, disclosing that the individual in the photo is not Nagi himself but her older brother, Sasuke, who coincidentally happens to be Nagi's biological sibling. Surprisingly, Nagi remains calm and composed upon receiving this news. Erika's parents, for reasons unknown, have deliberately chosen to ignore the existence of Sasuke, Erika's older brother. However, Erika has always harbored a deep desire to reunite with him. When she first met Nagi, she had initially mistaken him for Sasuke, as they bear a striking resemblance to each other. Despite Erika's online fame, Sasuke has never reached out to her, leading her to contemplate giving up on her celebrity status. However, Nagi proposes a different approach. Rather than waiting for Sasuke to make contact, he suggests that they take the initiative to actively search for him together. Upon Sachai's return from the hospital, Nagi contemplates his past interactions with Erika and begins to question whether he was merely a substitute for Sasuke. Determined to find answers, he gathers the courage to confront his biological parents, Soakiro and Ratsuko, about the truth behind Sasuke. Erika opens up to Sachi about Sasuke, and this revelation helps Sachi gain a deeper understanding of Erika's personality, as Sachi herself is also a younger sister. Despite Naga's attempts to confront Soakiro about Sasuke, Soakiro stubbornly denies Sasuke's existence and surprises Nagi by suggesting that marrying Sachai would solve all of his problems. Nagi returns home feeling frustrated and disappointed after his unsuccessful search for Sasuke, only to find Erika and Sachi preparing for their summer break. Erika is not surprised by Nagi's lack of progress and unexpectedly agrees that technically Nagi could marry Sachai. However, Erika falls silent when Nagi points out that, according to Soakiro's logic, Erika could also marry Sasuke out of the blue. Meanwhile, Hiro invites Nagi on a second date to go bicycling. Before they embark on their bicycling trip, Hiro presents Nagi with a riddle, what is the nearest and farthest thing? As they ride together, Nagi ponders Soakiro's perplexing and unsettling behavior. Eventually, they arrive at a beach, and Hiro unveils the answer to the riddle, family. Nagi vents about Soakiro while Hiro desires to grow up quickly. During another meal with Soakiro, Sachai is asked about her willingness to marry Nagi. Back at home, Sachi starts acting distant, causing Nagi to become concerned. Sachi becomes increasingly irritated whenever Nagi assumes the role of an older brother. Frustrated, she asks him if he would marry her if she were to propose. However, when Nagi honestly responds that he wouldn't marry Sachi because she is his sister, she pretends it was just a joke. Nagi receives his end-of-year report and is thrilled to reclaim the top spot, becoming first in the rankings. He hopes that this achievement will bring him closer to dating Hiro. However, Hiro once again rejects Nagi, mentioning her fiancé and expressing a desire to become Nagi's fiancé instead. Erika invites everyone to one of her beach houses to unravel the significance of Hiro's words. However, Erika chooses to keep their living arrangement a secret from Hiro. Upon their return, Sachai has already invited Hiro over for a study session. 
to everyone's surprise, Hiro is shocked and admits that she had suspected they were living together for some time. There, Nagi decides to directly ask Sachai if she has a crush on him, and although she reprimands him for embarrassing her, she never explicitly denies it. Sachai is upset with Hiro for disclosing certain information to Nagi, leaving her feeling both angry and confused about what Suikiro had mentioned. Later, Erika clarifies that their house only has two beds, resulting in Sachai and Nagi having to share one based on a draw. Erika inquires about Hiro's fiancé, and Hiro confesses that she has never actually met him. Hiro approaches Erika with a request to marry Nagi, but she drifts off to sleep before receiving a response. Unable to rest next to Sachi, Nagi exits the room and encounters Erika. During their conversation, Erika reminisces about her past visits to the beach house with Sasuke. Intrigued by this, Erika decides to investigate further and uncovers evidence on a gaming console indicating that Sasuke had been at the beach house merely three days ago. Filled with hope that Sasuke might still be in the neighboring town, Nagi hastens his search to find him. Erika, on the other hand, is overwhelmed by the prospect of unexpectedly encountering Sasuke after years of longing, uncertain of how to approach him. However, Nagi assures Erika of his unwavering support, pledging to stand by her side through whatever unfolds. After an exhaustive day of searching, it becomes evident that no one in the town has any knowledge of Sasuke's whereabouts. Erika reluctantly concludes that Sasuke must have departed already. Nonetheless, she expresses deep gratitude to Nagi for his unwavering help and support throughout the endeavor. Hiro makes the decision for her and Nagi to return home separately from Erika and Sachai. They intend to take the train to a nearby shrine and obtain a stamp as a joint activity. In the meantime, Erika discloses to Sachai that Hiro has expressed her desire to marry Nagi. Unfortunately, their train gets cancelled, leaving Nagi and Hiro stranded. Erika and Sachai are taken aback when Nagi sends them a text, explaining that he and Hiro will have to spend the night there. Nagi feels embarrassed when they have to pretend to be married in order to secure a hotel room. He initially intends to sleep on the floor, but an accident occurs, resulting in them sharing the bed. Nagi attempts to get up from the bed. However, Hiro proposes that since they have already resorted to dishonesty to secure the room, engaging in another mischievous act wouldn't make much of a difference. Nagi, feeling embarrassed once more, finds it uncomfortable when Hiro suggests buying alcohol, as she desires to break free from her reputation as a perfect student and seek some rebellious enjoyment. Suddenly, the police arrive, and Nagi becomes fearful, worried that their fabricated age lies might lead to trouble and potential expulsion from school. However, it turns out to be an orchestrated prank by Erika and Sachi, who had hired a taxi to surprise them. Later, Erika and Sachi interrogate Nagi, seeking to know if anything significant occurred between him and Hiro during their time alone. As they ride back home in the car, Hiro intentionally gives a cryptic response to the interrogation. Meanwhile, Nagi, Sachai, and Erika receive an invitation to Yo's upcoming birthday celebration. While reminiscing over old photos from Yo's past birthdays, Erika notices the presence of a young girl with silver hair in one of the pictures. Damien Yo discloses that they had initially desired Nagi and Erika to enter into a marriage arrangement, as they believed it would contribute to the unity of their family. However, they no longer hold such concerns. Nagi and Erika come to the realization that there is now no valid justification for them to maintain their engagement. The next day, Erika succumbs to a fever and collapses. Sachi and Hiro assume the responsibility of caring for her, but Erika brushes off their assistance. Nagi intervenes and uncovers that Erika's illness is a result of her excessive concern for Sachi and Hiro, which has drained her both physically and mentally. Erika expresses her curiosity about Nagi's deep understanding of her, and he attributes it to their engagement. Sachai and Hiro overhear this conversation and come to the realization that Erika will always have a special connection with Nagi, which particularly unsettles Hiro. Meanwhile, Joby sends them a copy of his birthday photo as a gesture. The birthday photo includes Erika, prompting her to contemplate the possibility of having a family like Nagi's. Nagi subtly implies that anything is possible in the future. Meanwhile, Sachi secretly meets with Soak Hiro, who expresses his satisfaction with the progress Nagi and Erika are making in their journey towards marriage. Soak Hiro emphasizes that the final decision regarding marriage should be made by Nagi and Erika, free from any external pressure. Meanwhile, Erika and Nagi continue to engage in arguments about household chores, expressing their mutual frustration with being engaged to someone who irritates them. And that's brings the video to an end. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Also turn on notification bell so you'll never miss out new video. See you next time, take care.